Hey guys, it's Agonis Itelmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a video with the liter scanner. So what I'm going to be showing you is how to do something like this. You can see that my iPad is, you know, basically scanning my face. I am creating a mesh and as I move the iPad around, you know, the, the mesh is getting, is getting generated. So I'm going to show you just uh, basically the basic setup, how to get it going and how to set up the Unity project. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to install all the packages that we need in order to start using Leader and basically do meshing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a window, Package Manager. We're going to be looking at the latest version of basically AR Foundation, which is 4.0.0. That's the one that I was reading about that it has the Leader implementation. So I'm just going to go ahead and install Preview 3. If you don't see this in the list, make sure you go into Advanced and click on show preview packages otherwise it won't show the preview packages and currently that is in preview so we're going to be installing preview 3. Let's give it a few seconds until it installs and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be installing the the XR plugin for ARKit because we're going to be running this on the new iPad Pro 11. All right so it looks like this is already installed so let's now search for XR and then if you search for XR, we should see a lot of the XR components. So we're going to need the XR, the XR plugin for ARKit. So I'm going to go ahead and install the exact same version. I tried to match everything up. So if we have the Air Foundation, you know, version preview 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, let's, let's make sure that we do the same thing with this plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and install that one as well. All right, so looks at like that plugin is, is installed. So the last one that we're going to be needing, it's going to be the XR plugin management. So I'm going to do the exact same thing and just going to go ahead and scroll down. Looks like there's really not a new version as the, you know, as it relates to the ones that we install. So let's go ahead and install the one that is verified for this version of Unity, which is 2018.3.5F1. And looks like it was already a dependency of the other plugin, so we don't need to do anything with it. I think it might have been added a dependency of either AR Foundation. You can also look at the dependencies here. Looks like this is a dependency of AR Foundation, so it automatically installs. So Package Manager is doing most of the work. So now that we have that installed, what do we need to do? So we need to just go ahead and add some of the AR plugin, the AR components. So we're going to right click in here and going to go to XR. We're going to do the XR Session Origin. That one is going to be bringing in the camera. So we don't need this camera here, so I'm just going to go ahead and read of it. We're also going to need an AR Session, so I'm just going to go ahead and create that. Normally put that first and then the air session origin. And that's basically everything that we need to do as far as that. And if we need to start doing meshing so we can start scanning our area, we're going to be adding a new component. And we can just add it to the air session origin. I think that's okay. And in this one, I'm just going to be searching for meshing because that is what was available to be able to do meshing. So it's called the AR face uh, mesh manager. So I don't think there's any dependencies on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new dependency here. We can just say a new game object. It's going to be the AR Mesh, AR Mesh Manager. And we can add a spaces so that we match everything up in there. And then we can just add the AR Mesh Manager. So looks at the hierarchy, not allowed, must be a child of the, okay. So that is a dependency, so I'm glad that we're going through that. It needs to be a child of the AR Session Origin. So let's go ahead and add it and put it inside. And I haven't done this before, so I'm all new to this as well. So some of the other options that are available here are going to be the mesh prefab. So if you want the actual mesh to be rendered, we're going to have to populate the mesh prefab. I'm going to show you how to do that. We can also specify the density. It looks like this is going to be the density of, you know, when the mesh gets generated. If there's more details, on, well, you can increment this number. If you hover over this, it should also tell you what is that, what it does. So the density of the generated mesh from 0 to 1, 1 will be the highly tessellated, while 0 will be very low. You can also specify whether normals are calculated. If you set this up, CPU times are going to be safe. You also can have tangents for each vertice, vertices. So if you want to have that calculated, you can do that as well. Texture coordinates, colors, and also the concurrent queue size. So this is because we don't want to block the main thread. I was reading the Unity documentation. Looks like they're using the job system behind the scenes. So the larger the number, the more parallel processings that are going to happen when the mesh gets generated. So 
you can play with some of these numbers, some of these settings. I'm going to be using those as well and playing with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a new mesh. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, I'm going to just go ahead and create a new empty. This is going to be our basically our mesh for the generated for the generated meshing 3D objects. So I'm just going to do mesh. We can just call it mesh 3D or meshing. It doesn't really matter. And then in this one, we're going to need a couple of things. So we're going to need a mesh filter. So that's required because the generated mesh is going to have to be rendered and Unity will need that in order for the mesh to get generated. I'm also going to need uh, basically a collider because I'm, for the future videos, we're going to be using collisions and seeing how collisions work with the generated meshes. And then the last thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to also need a material. So to do that, we're going to need, let's see, we're going to need a render material, the mesh render component. So let me go ahead and move this one up. That's normally what I do. I have the mesh filter, the mesh render, and then we're going to need a material, right? Because that's going to be the material that we're going to be using for the mesh. So I'm going to go here, folder. I'm going to create a new materials folder. Let's right click in here. Go into create material. I'm going to just call it meshing so that we know that that's going to be the one for that. And I'm going to drag it and drop it into that game object and that should assign it. I don't want that to be that color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, let's go ahead and create a new, just a, a cube. I think it's fine. And I can disable the gizmos just for now. Drag and drop that so that I can see that the how that looks. Let me do that one more time. There we go. And then we can just change the, some of the settings in here. We can do, I want to make sure that we can do something that, you know, we can, that actually looks good when we're generating the mesh or that we can see it. So in this case, I can do maybe a red. I think it's fine. We can use the transparent rendering mode. And I'm going to change the opacity here. Do something like that works. And I think that works fine. We can do we can do either a little bit of metallic in there. And I think red will, will work just fine. So what I'm going to do is we can now go here into the AR Mesh Manager. And we're going to assign our mesh. So this one is going to be mesh cube. Cube. And remember, the, this is just for, for a demo right now. This, we don't really need to have the cube in there. The reason why I have that is because I wanted to see it. But in reality, when I create this prefab, I'm not going to have the cube because it's going to generate the system is going to generate the mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. And this one is going to be prefabs. I'm going to double click in it. And we can just call, let's go ahead and rename this. It's going to be just our mesh, right? And we can do, or we can call it just mesh template. I think that works. And this didn't rename it, but it's fine. We can just go ahead and go in here. Mesh template. Perfect. And I can just remove it. And then now here on the prefab, I'm going to just remove the mesh because we don't need that. Now what I can do, we can go into prefabs. I'm going to, I'm going to drag and drop our mesh filter. And now you can see that the filter is assigned. I also have the density. And then we can look at some of these settings as I play around with it. So that's everything that we need to do in there. We need to do a couple of things for the, basically to set up so that we can actually build this. I'm going to add this scene as an open scene and then go into iOS. I'm going to be switching the platform. All right, so I also connected my iPad so that we can get it going. And then now that we have this set as, as iOS, we should be go good to go there. I'm going to go into player settings. And we need to do a couple of things in player settings so that we can set up the, the uh, application. So normally on the company, I'm just going to do Delmer Games, LLC. We can do, we can just do leader, leader demo on the product name. And then on the version, I'm just going to do the major, minor, and patch. And we can move this down here. It should almost be done. And then for iOS, we're going to need a couple of things in here. We're going to need to change the version of the of the actual iOS version that we're going to be deploying to. So if you scroll down and we look at the version that we have on the minimum, I'm going to have a minimum of 11. And then the device is going to be the one that we use. We're also going to require a ARKit support. And I also need to tell the system that we're going to be requiring the camera. So it looks like Unity already adds that automatically. That wasn't the case before, so that's cool that they're doing that. And then I'm going to be using ARM64, so let's make sure that we have that selected. And that's everything that we need to do in here. The other thing that we need to do is we need to go into our AR or XR plugin management. 
and make sure that we have the provider enabled. So I'm going to be using ARKit. The plugin provider has already been added. It looks like that it's different in this version. It used to be that you had to add it manually, but that's great. That's already been added. And then I'm also going to be going into XR AR build settings. I'm going to be clicking on create. It's going to be creating a new ARKit settings. So we can just put here the XR settings. It's going to be a folder that I'm going to create. I'm going to put that one in there just in case when AR core you know, supports this, this feature, we can have it if they ever support it. Then I can hit save. This is going to be required. And then the last thing that we need to do is just go into file, build settings, and then we're just going to be building our first leader demo. It's going to call it leader demo. I'm going to build it and then I'll just show you the results as soon as this is done building. All right, guys, so I got this running. I'm just going to go ahead and launch it. So we should see the Unity logo. And we're going to go ahead and start scanning the room. I'm just going to go ahead and move my iPad around. You can see my camera is right there. I'm going to scan the wall. I'm also going to scan the floor. So the tessellation on these instance, I have it set to one. So there's a lot of details. The triangulation on the meshes that get created, they have a lot of detail. I also set the concurrency on the Q size to the to number A. So I double the amount and you can see how everything it's working. I also have the microphone here, so we can kind of go ahead and stand up and then show you how I can just scan all around my room. So you can also add classifications on this. So you can tell the system to basically identify if we're scanning the wall, if we're scanning the floor. So I'm going to be doing that a lot more in the next upcoming videos. For now, we're just going to keep it simple. We know that this works really well. So now if I go around and I sit down, you can see how, you know, everything is just, you know, getting more accurate. You have to just, you know, spend time scanning the room. So I'm going to call this good. And, and this was a successful video. If you guys have any questions about the leader scanner, let me know. And just know that I'm going to be posting new videos about this technology in the upcoming weeks. Thank you, guys.